I want to talk a little bit about love for a lifetime. Now, a lifetime can be a long time. It can be a short time. But as long as I have breath, as long as I'm able to stand, as long as I'm able to speak, I'm going to praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because I love Him for a lifetime. How about you? Do you love Him? Amen. In 1 John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, it says, Hereby proceed we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. When God says He loves us, it was for eternity, for a lifetime or eternity. In Jeremiah 31 and 3, in the latter part, it says, we are to love with everlasting love. Now think about that. So when I read that scripture in 1 John 3, 16, where it says, hereby proceed we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. I had to think about that a little bit. Who am I willing to lay my life down for? And I thought, I'd lay my life down for my family. I'd, I'd, I'd be willing, no matter what, to, to give my life so my family can live. Then I began to think about my brethren. And I began to think about different ones. Would I be willing to do the same for them? Jesus did, didn't he? Yes. And so I must be willing to lay down my life for them. Why? Because of the love of God that's in me. Now, if that is easy said, there's a lot of things that's easy said, right? But to follow through is another thing. But isn't it wonderful to know that we have a, a Savior that follows through on all things? Yes, amen. And, and, and he, he did all things for us. So let's look at a couple of things. And I want to talk about sacrificial love. In Romans 12, 1, I don't know if she got the same version I got, but she doesn't. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's a whole lot in those two scriptures right there. A whole lot of it. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, by the renewing of your mind. When I was a, a young man, as I said earlier, in, in school, and a pretty girl come by, I was in love right. all the time. <laughs> and, and you guys know what I'm talking about. And you girls probably did too. I'm sure that when they say somebody, a guy looked good, I don't know, but they, they, they look, they, I'm in love too. You know how that goes. Uh, I may used to remember getting a little cars. I love you, do you love me? <laughs> I mean, they were rope one of those little ones. God won't be truthful. <laughs> Am I the only one? I see it. Yeah, I like it. Honest people. Honest people make it to heaven. Amen. So, but, but, I mean, I know you did. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not the kind of, <laughs> you know, but, but by, that's not the, the total love I'm talking about. I'm trying to forget the point I was just fixing to make. And be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I had to renew my mind from that and truly understand what love is. Now, when Chief and I got married, I thought, man, I couldn't love her any more than I loved her at that moment. But I found out the longer we've been together, I love her more every day. Amen. I love her so much more today than what I did when we first got married. Yeah, you like that? Huh? I like it too. It sounds good to me. I got a feeling I'm going to get a good meal coming up here shortly. <laughs> Maybe even some paydays. I ain't sure. That. <laughs> she took my payday and put it in the refrigerator so I wouldn't be looking at it. So I don't know what she's telling me. I don't know if I can eat it or I can't. Because I like it in the refrigerator a little harder. But she, I think she's telling me don't eat it without giving her a hat. But I always share everything I got. But, but, but anyway, the transforming of my mind means I have to change my thought process. That means I've got to look at things differently than what I, I, I used to look at it. And so when I began to think about God when I was younger, I knew there was a God. And I heard about this God. I heard about Jesus. I knew all about Jesus dying on the cross and I might have life. I understood all that, but I didn't know Him. So as a kid, I understood about Him. Matter of fact, there'd be times I'd go to bed at night and I'd say, Lord, if I don't let me die tonight because I know I'm not right. I don't know if any of you ever done that, but I did that a lot. 
And, but when I got to know Him, and when I got to have a relationship with Him, my whole thought process began to change. And I remember that night that Jesus came in my life, and I thought I could never love Him any more than I love Him right then. But I want to tell you something. I love Him so much more today than what I did way back then. Amen. Why? Because He's part of my life. He is the most important person in my life. And, and I'm going to call that kind of like an agape love, an unconditional love. And when I think about like that, that unconditional love, He loved me unconditionally. And if I have a need, and I ask for that need to be taken care of, God's going to take care of the need that I need taken care of. Maybe not the way I want it, but the way He knows is best for me. And why would He do it that way? Why would He let me go ahead and have it the way I want it? Because He loves me enough, He's not going to give me something that would be hurtful to me. He's going to give me something that would be good to me. Amen? Amen. Why? Because He loves us. I used to think my parents were so mean when I was growing up. How you ever thought your parents was mean? You know, I, I thought my parents were so dumb they couldn't understand nothing. And I become this little teenager. Yeah, see, I'm John. Yeah, he's back there too. And I had become this teenager and I became smart. <laughs> I did. I was so smart I knew everything about everything and knew nothing about anything. But in my mind, I knew everything. And I would listen to them and I'd, uh -huh, understand, understand. But I'd go ahead and want to do it my own way. And when I did it my way, I always ended up getting in trouble. And then when my parents found out I did it, then I got in more trouble. See, back then, they could put a belt on your behind, and it was all right. Today, if they do that, they go to jail. Makes no sense to me. And my parents meant business. If I got in trouble at school, I got a paddle at school. I remember one Mr. Witt had a paddle that he had drilled holes in. Man, that was pure. Yeah, y'all. I mean, y'all had Y'all. I love it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And they called that love. <laughs>
corrects us. And we have to take the word Christ away. He corrects us. And he helps us to understand what we need to do. And we want to get so mad because it just don't work out the way we think it should. And as we're crying, I think he's crying too because he loves us so much. Amen. But he does it because that, that, that love he has is unconditional. And I think about that unconditional love he has for me. And then I think about a giving love. And, and I thought about what can I do to have a giving love to someone? I have to give myself. I have to be willing to express my love to others so they might understand what love is. And I, I remember, and I, and I can go back and I told y'all one day, and y'all laughed at me that I was very shy, I was very backward, my very low self esteem. And I still fight with battles, man. And I shared that with you. And, and I remember I always thought people were making fun of me. And really they weren't making fun of me. And if somebody tried to correct me or do something different or tell me I was wrong, then I just thought they were being mean and nasty to me. And that just made me mad. Not realizing they actually was trying to help me. I remember when she and I started dating, I asked her one time, I said, you love me? She said, yeah. I said, you love me more than anything? Yeah. They said, Jesus. And I said, why am I in competition with Jesus? That was my thought process. Why am I in that kind of competition? I didn't understand. I understand today. And she had to teach me what God's love was all about. So she gave herself to me to teach me. And I, to teach me. Now I've got to give myself to others to be able to teach them. And each one of us has got to give ourselves to other people to help them understand who God is. Amen? How many know that God is love? When I, I hope John's okay. When I talked to John the other day, when he called me and talked about his mother, she's a sweet lady. I met her quite a few times. They've been here quite a few times, and they moved up to Day City, and it was just didn't know what's happening. It just happened. But you know what John said? He said, "I, I, I know I'm gonna miss her, but she's up in heaven with Jesus right now, rejoicing and praising Him." And you know how he can understand that? Because he knows who the love of God is. And the love of God put his arms around him and said, I got your mama. She's under control. Everything's going to be all right. And he accepted that. That's how God loves us. To let us know that everything's going to be right. So I call that a giving love. When we give of ourselves to, to, to help others. Because that's what God did. He gave his self. gave us the son to help each and every one of us. And then below it. To do good and charitable acts, helping others. Hebrews 13, 15, and 16 said, By him therefore let us offer sacrifices of praise to God continuously. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. In other words, we've got to learn to be obedient and faithful to God. Amen? Amen. When I can become obedient and faithful to him, Good things happen in my life. And we've talked about this many times. Many preachers have talked about it. Anybody can make a sacrifice. I can even sacrifice paydays. I can sacrifice a steak. I can even sacrifice not eating a whole day. And I can do that. But obedience is something different. Obedience means that I'm going to obey the Word of God and follow the Word of God and I'm going to see God do great things for me. Amen? You see, when I'm obedient to Him, He is faithful to me. Now think about that. When I'm obedient to Him, He's faithful to me because why? Because He loves me. Wow. And then there's submissive love. James 4, 7, they said, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. And He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he would draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, he says, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Now, think about that just for, for one moment. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Submit. That's a tough word. It's a tough word. How many likes to submit to anything? That's a tough word. But the scripture says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee. So what he's saying here, I love you so much that if you will submit to me, now don't you think about this, if you will submit to me, if you will be obedient to me, 
And then you resist the devil. Because if you submit it to me, when you resist the devil, he will flee from you. Amen. Now think about that. Now how many is mad right now about something? You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> how many is angry about something? Maybe that's a better word. How many had somebody upset you and you really like to just tell them what you think? Oh, I see some smiles right now. As long as it ain't me, I'm all right. But, but think about that for a minute. How many of you like just to tell off? Wouldn't it make you feel good if you could just get it out? You know what the devil's doing? He's messing with your head. He's telling you, go ahead and do it. God understands. They've done you wrong. you got it right. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Is that what that is? Wow. That's what the good book says. But that's not what God is saying. If I submit all my hurt and all my pain, and I submit and give them over to the Lord, and I resist the devil every time he tries to bring it back to me, the love of God will make him flee. Amen? Now think about that just for a minute. As long as I'm submitting myself to the Lord, and I'm saying, God, it is yours, it's not mine. You take care of it. I know you love me, and I know you care for me. And then when the devil comes, rebuke him in the name of Jesus, the power of God will make him leave. Amen. So every one of us today can submit to God right now. Come on. And all that hurt or pain you might be carrying, resist the devil from giving it to you, and watch the devil flee and leave you alone. That's why God, God loves us so much. And you say, well, preacher, that's easier said than done. That's true. I understand that. But we've got to start somewhere. Amen. And we start by submitting. We start by getting hold of God. If we begin to do that, we live a Christ-centered life. Now, what is a Christ-centered life? What kind of life is that? That means everything that I do, Christ is directing my life. That means he is the center of my life. He, 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 he's directing my life. I'm letting him lead me. Now, when I, when I thought about that, I thought about, okay, I know God leads me. But sometimes I tell God how to lead me. That ain't what I'm talking about. A Christ-centered life being led by the Spirit. Amen? And as long as the Spirit is leading me, he's going to lead me down the right path. Now, it's hard sometimes to let go of things. It really is. It's hard to let go. But when I have a Christ-centered life, Christ controlling my life, that's what I'm saying here, Him controlling my life, He's going to lead me the right way. I'm not going to go over here, I'm not going to go over there, I'm not going to go there. Now, Christ-centered life doesn't mean that, okay, I can go to another Christian and tell them what I'm thinking. I can go to someone and it's okay to have a confidant you can speak to and talk to. But that doesn't give us the right to go gospel and talk about this one or that one. A Christ-centered life, we'll find the one that we're having the biggest problem with, and we'll get on our knees, and we'll begin to pray, and we'll ask God to help us. Amen. Amen? Have you never been accused of doing something you didn't do? Yes. Right, me too. Have you, ever, have you ever been accused of saying something you didn't say? Yes. Me too. And does it, does it, does it anger you just a little bit? Yeah. Me too. But I had to learn something. I had to learn that it's not my place to cast judgment. It's not my place to take care of it. It's God's place to lead me and tell me how to handle it. Amen? Because if I'm going to take care of it, I'm going to do this. That's right. Put that head down. Did you hear that? You know, I'm glad he dug that head. You know, because he's too big to be measured. But, but God's going to do this. He's going to say then you're going to do it this way. Well, hey, brother, how are you doing? I want to tell you, I love you with the love of God. That's going to change atmosphere. That's going to change attitudes. Because why? Because when we're Christ-centered, the love of God is in us. And we're going to express our love one to another. Think about that. So that's living for God. God pouring everything into us. Remember the other week we talked about, I can do all things through Christ with strength in me? First, it took me being determined to do something. And then me at the end, I'm going to get the benefits. And in between, it's all spiritual. It's all about God doing it. In other words, when I looked up the Greek, it says that means he's going to pour into us. 
I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Why does He strengthen you? Because He loves you. He cares for you. So He's going to pour everything He has into you to make you a better person and to me to make me a better person. So I can express the love of God. So as, as we go into Bible times, the day of time represents love. All the hearts, ladies will be getting a lot of flowers and candy and hopefully taken out to, to eat and all these good things. But let's think about the true love. The true meaning of love is Christ. Amen? And to finish up, we talk about a separate love. 2 Corinthians 6, 4 through 17. 4, 17. And I think I left out one scripture here, but it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out among them, and be you separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you, and will be the Father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. When I used to read that scripture, I used to look at it maybe a little bit differently than what I look at it today. I used to look at it, I can't hang around sinners, because we all need to be yoked. I have to be careful. I can't, I can't talk to someone that doesn't believe just like I believe. But when I began to look at the Scripture and begin to, to see what God was talking about, there's a lot of love in the passage of the Scriptures there. I can hang around a sinner as long as I'm teaching him about the things of God. Amen? Amen? I can let him know or let her know that God is real. I didn't know that God is real today. Yes. When, when Sheila and I was dating, that was a Scripture that, that used to be throwing it kind of both of us a little bit because she was a Christian and I was a heathen. You can't be unequally yoked. Uh -huh. He's a heathen. You're not. you got to watch that heathen. And I, and I heard that from the preacher. And, and I remember when I asked the pastor to marry us, they I can remember the conversation. He said, don't you think you need to get saved before you marry that beautiful woman? I said, I'm just asking you to marry us, not preach to me. That's kind of strong. Yeah. And I said, if you don't want to do the wedding, that's okay. And there was a little, <clears throat> there for a little bit. And he come back, he said, I'm going to do the wedding. He said, I'm going to tell you something. You hang around this, this is going to get you. Yeah. And you know what? I hung around him. Jesus got hold of him. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. It's just wonderful to worry about that. Yeah. I would have been if you'd approached me this way. I want you to know, son, you're getting out. A fine young lady, and she's a good Christian lady, and I'm praying that God gets hold of you and save your soul also. Wouldn't that be better? But we don't take ourselves to places we don't need to go, folks. We don't want to be doing hanging with things that's not good for us, that can destroy us. I remember a preacher that used to go to the bars all the time, and his ministry was to was to save the drunk. I'm going to the bars, I'm going to save the drunkards. And, and most of you know who exactly it is, but I called his name, but I don't really need to call his name. But he went and went down to Louisiana. He just kept going and going into the bars. And he, he preached in the beginning, but eventually something changed. He got hung up in the bars and never came out of the bars. And then eventually, I just heard not long ago that he has repented and got his life back in order again. But I remember a statement he said, don't go, and get, don't go anywhere where the devil can have a foothold. Don't go anywhere where the devil can get hold of you, is what he was saying, and destroy who you are. Amen? Amen. Look, I'm a child of the king. Amen? And I know I'm, I go around sinners all the time. I'm like, hey, where do you go? You find sinners. People don't know God. But I'm not going to participate in their lifestyle. You know what I'm going to do? Yeah. If I get an opportunity, I'm going to tell them about Jesus. You know what? They need to know because of the love of God. So, biblical separation. There's a Bible that says we cannot, there's a scripture that says you cannot serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other. I don't know about you. I love God today. How many loves God? Amen. I love Him with all my might. I do. Give the Lord another hand. Clap for you. I'm going to love Him for the rest of my life because He's the most important person in my life. And, and, if he loves me, 
my family, I'm going to love them the rest of my life. They know that. They're the most important people in my life. My church family, I'm going to love you whether you love me or not. I'm just going to love you because you're so beautiful. Look at all of you out there, so beautiful. Well, I think so. And I'm going to love this world because this world needs Jesus. Amen? How can I do that? Because I'm Christ-centered. And I now understand a little bit, very little, about what the love of God is. I have people coming to me a lot, so well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Is that right or is that wrong? She was dad used to give her an answer to something. She would question him and say, Dad, I don't know if this is right or wrong. He said, honey, if you question it, leave it alone until you get an answer. Sometimes we have to back off some things because we don't know the answer. And I don't want to go here and tell, well, if it's biblical, I'll tell you exactly what the Bible says. And that's how I, I don't judge. I let the Bible tell you because it's not my place to judge. It's my place to love. Amen? And I'll share the Word of God with you. And I'll share what the Scripture says. And I'll do my best to explain it to the best of my ability. But I'm going to tell you something. Once you have that relationship with God, and once you feel the true love of God, you'll know what's right, and you'll know what's wrong. Why? Because God loves us so much. Go back to that one scripture and finish this up. In Romans 12, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you'll stand with me. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Go ahead and place on the phone. By the renewing of your mind. How do I renew my mind? How, how do I make changes in my mind that's been there for a long period of time? How can I how can I get rid of all the hatred, the hurt, and the pain and the depression that I go through? How can I get rid of that? I'm going to give you one key thing, one key word today, or two words. You can. You can. But I can do all things through who? Through Christ, which strengthens me. He can help you. But before He can help us, we must be willing to allow God to take care of it. Amen? Amen. So how do we allow God to take care of something when we're, we're so confused about something? How do, we, how do we get to the next place? Because our mind is just going here and going there and going here and going there and you just can't seem to grab hold of it and get peace with it. I've been there. I've been there even after I've been a Christian. I got down on my knees or wherever your prayer closet might like be standing up or wherever. And when I get feeling like that, I come before the Lord and I said, Lord, I can't handle this. But I know you can help me get through this. You know, the scripture tells me, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. So if he's in here, and I know that he's in here, if I will give him the opportunity to work in me, he will get these things out of me. Amen? Come on, folks. He'll get it out. That's his love for us. That's what he wants to do. He wants to get all these things out of our mind and get us to the place that we can just worship and praise Him. How many is ready to praise Him just a little bit this morning? How many is ready to say, thank you, Lord, for all the things you've done for me. Thank you, God, for my blessings. How many is ready to say, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow, whether it's going to be good or bad in my eyes, but I want to thank you because I know you're going to help me through it, no matter what it is. That's a tough one. Because He loves us. 
And when he came in our lives, he loves us for eternity, for a lifetime and eternity. How many love him today? As they begin to sing that song, how many will come down to this altar or right where you're at? And just have a talk with Jesus. And they're going to sing that song, I'm going to go, how I love Jesus. Amen? Y'all just come. How many will come and join me? If you will, just come. We hope that this season and this, this time that we're in the Valentine season, that you truly understand what the true love is, and that is the love of God. Because God loves us so much. Amen? Amen. He cares for us. Hey, He loved me. Yeah, I like the way Kenny does that. I don't know why, but He did. But He loves each and every one of us. And He cares for us. So during this season, think about the love of God. But men, please, don't be foolish and don't you make sure you take care of your wives please I'm just putting that out there to you if anyone wants to come over I get in trouble there